Today I want to talk about the track Disorder by Joy Division and I've looked at two or three Joy Division tracks previously back in the early days of this channel and people are still watching those videos which is quite nice and I thought it was about time I did another one so let me begin by playing through this track then I will discuss how to play the guitar parts and I might even discuss the bass line as well because that's quite integral to this track and to much Joy Division stuff. opening track on Unknown Pleasures, the first Joy Division record which came out in 1979 and what a way to open your first record and this track still sounds so atmospheric and it's so different from what anybody else is doing and I revisited the track this week just to research it for the purposes of this video and some really strange things going on both in the production and in the playing which is all over the place in a couple of spots in the track and I think the band themselves are the first to admit that when they went into the studio to record this album they didn't really have any clue what they were doing they'd never been in the studio before hadn't been playing their instruments for very long and it makes it all the more amazing that they came out of those sessions with such a classic record and of course this kind of music isn't about being a virtuoso guitar player or some kind of chops meister it's about ideas and feeling and coming up with interesting parts. So this is a nice accessible track. It's pretty beginner friendly. We've got a simple to play main riff. We've got a nice guitar solo as well. So let's take a look at what's going on. So I'm hearing this one in the key of B flat and the basic chords that are implied by a combination of what the bass and the guitar and the vocals are doing are, are these. We've got E flat for a bar, G minor for a bar, then B flat for a bar, and then back to G minor for a bar. So it's a four chord cycle, which really just repeats for the entire track. And E flat, this is the four chord in the key of B flat. Then we've got the six minor chord. That's the one chord. And then that's the six minor chord again. Now, whether music theory is actually helpful when you're discussing bands and music like this, I'm not actually sure. I sometimes doubt it in the case of songs like this one but that's the way I would hear it I think if you pushed me on the key and the theory behind this tune. Let's begin by looking at the bass line and as I said it's based on a repeated four chord progression and uh, why don't I show you this on the bass guitar. Funny I don't think I've played bass before in one of my videos or I do play bass every week on my backing tracks but I've not actually played bass on camera before but I do play a bit of bass I do enjoy playing bass and we're all guitar players, so playing bass is easy, right? Anyway, this is a classic Peter Hook bass line. Try it on a bass guitar if you've got one. You can just play it on a normal guitar on the lower four strings if you'd like to, or next time you're playing with a band or rehearsing, you can grab your bass player's instrument and uh, play a cool bass line on it next time you get a chance. Uh, the basic idea is this, we've got... So starting off on this E flat note here, this is the 8th fret on the G string. And I've got an open G string. I think this is how it's played on the recording. This seems to work for me. I don't guarantee it, but it's quite nice just to have this high fretted note and then the open string. Then we're jumping all the way down to this low B flat, so this is the 6th fret on the low E string. Do you call it the low E string on the bass? It's just the E string, I suppose. I'm <laughs> not used to teaching this bass stuff. So this note here. And then we've got the 10th fret on the A string. So And I'm 
playing it with all down strokes of the pick. I think Peter Hook uses a pick. I think he mostly plays down strokes, and that works for this kind of track, I think, just aggressively digging in with those down strokes. So... <laughs> played with a lot of feeling there's sometimes a bit of noise and you can kind of hear extra open strings in there as well but it's a really cool bass line and that bass line repeats for much of the song but there is a nice variation you can hear on the bass line when the guitar solo is happening and that goes something like this <laughs> off in exactly the same way. We've got a bit more melody in there, so just fret 7, 8, 7 and then open. Once again down to this B flat. And a really weird, quite dissonant bit here. We've got a D and the fifth fret on the, the A string and then down on the E string, so 7, 6 and open, that's what I'm hearing, it's pretty weird but um, I, I do like it. And then at the end of the phrase we're just going back up to this G before it repeats. enough bass for now let me switch back to guitar now as for the guitar parts we've got the main riff which is nice and simple it goes like this so, super simple but very effective this particular riff and we're up here at the 13th fret and we're starting with a it's a B flat power chord shape. So 13th fret on the A string, 15th fret on the D string. And there's something to be said for playing on the lower strings a bit higher up the neck. It's got a really nice tone to it when you come this high up the neck. I mean, you could play the same thing down here or down here, but it has got a nice kind of warmth to it when you're playing higher up the neck. And we're going between this shape here and this shape here. So you're just moving your first finger across to the 13th fret on the low E string, so you've now got an F note and an F note an octave higher. So it's B flat and F to F and F. And the rhythm is this, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, Notice that the riff is starting on beat four. We've got one, two, three, four, one. And as you change that note is also on the four. Four, one, two. And I think I'm playing this with mostly down strokes. You can sometimes hear some little variations. I think occasionally I'm hearing this. So just playing that high note twice just before the chord change. And also there, just as the riff repeats, there's sometimes an open fifth string in there that I'm hearing. Course you don't need to be too precise with a riff like this one. So that's the main riff. Let's move on to the little guitar solo or guitar break and it starts with this phrase. So 
super simple but really memorable and melodic this solo I think so starting on our root note this B flat eighth fret on the D string and we're really just going between the B flat and this C note two frets higher and then we've got a bend on that C note and the timing is this two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four so pretty simple but do pay attention to the timing there's that nice moment in the middle of the phrase where the B flat note is held across the bar line here and then that phrase is just repeated exactly the same and then the solo develops a little bit we're going up higher again just going between a pair of notes this time we're on the third string we've got a D at the seventh fret and an E flat at the eighth fret and then we've got this so again going up higher so I'm hearing a slide up to the tenth fret And then sliding back down to the seventh fret and then the phrase repeats and the solo ends by just repeating that F note let me put all of the solo together in time and slowly for another verse another guitar break both played almost exactly the same as before and one interesting thing that I noticed when I was researching this video and really listening to the song carefully and I'd not picked up on this before I think I must have felt it before but I'd not really analyzed it but the second time the main riff comes round it's slightly different in relation to the bass so the bass is displaced two bars from this riff and it gives the whole second verse a completely different feel to the first verse I don't know whether that was deliberate or an accident but it's a really important feature of this song that's almost it for the guitar part but at the very end of the song it does change and this is where I struggled slightly to hear exactly what was going on I think there are at least two guitars at the end of the track playing slightly different things so I'm just going to give you a few options here rather than me saying this is exactly what you must play at this point in the song I think the essence of it is just these power chords played quite high up the neck so a B flat power chord so 13 15 15 starting on the A string and then moving that up two frets to a C chord going back and forth between those chords that's option number one I think it's going even higher so I'm hearing something like this and it's a little bit clearer to hear that on some of the live recordings there are a few live recordings of this tune and you can hear that he's just playing these quite chaotic power chords a little bit higher up the neck and there's not a particular pattern to it I don't think and then a final option and this might be a second guitar part on the original recording and uh, it's very hard to hear so I can't promise that this is exactly what's going on but it sounds a lot like this so 
So just playing octaves here, so B flat octave, so 6th fret on the low E, 8th fret on the D, just muting the A string. Up two frets, up two frets again, and we've got this going from the 10th fret down to the 8th fret. talk you through the gear that I'm using today starting with my bass and this is of course a Fender Precision uh, I'm not even sure what model this is exactly I just picked it up because it was affordable and a really good sounding bass and I think if you're a guitar player and you want to have a bass guitar around you can't go too far wrong with a Fender Precision it's you know, one of the most recorded basses in history if not the most recorded bass in history across all kinds of different styles of music and you can't really go wrong with a bass like this and I don't own a bass guitar amp at the moment, but I do actually like the sound of bass guitar going through a guitar amp. I think for recording that can sometimes work really well, but that's not what I'm doing today. I'm actually going direct into the computer and I'll probably process this bass with some kind of amp simulation software. And I'm a big fan of the Universal Audio stuff. I've got all of their Ampeg uh, plugins, whatever you call them. Um, so I'll probably put it through one of those. As far as the guitar side of things goes, I'm just using my ears really to try and get vaguely close to the recording. Uh, I don't really know what was used on the original recording and there's a lot of mystery attached to Joy Division and to Martin Hannett as well. It's kind of mysterious production genius and no one's quite sure how he achieved some of those sounds. So I'm just kind of going with my instincts here and I'm using my Jazz Master and AC30 and the tone you hear on the record is slightly overdriven so I'm using my J Rocket Archer pedal for a bit of overdrive so the clean AC30 just sounds like this and then with the overdrive and then on the recording you can definitely hear some kind of effect it's a kind of modulation type effect and again not sure how this would have been achieved whether it was a guitar pedal or some kind of studio production trick but it's got a bit of a pitch shift to it a little bit of vibrato so I'm using today my MXR flanger which I bought so I could get some of those John McGeeck type Susie and the Banshees sounds but it works for this as well and I've just kind of set it um, to get that slight pitch wobbling sound it's one of those pedals where I don't really know what all of the knobs do so I just move them around until it sounds good and this is the setting that I arrived at <laughs> and then I'm not really hearing that sound on the solo so I'm switching off the flanger for that section of the tune and just going with the guitar into the AC30 through the overdrive pedal That's all for this video. Hope you found it interesting. As usual, the tab and the backing track are going to be up on my Patreon page. Thanks very much for watching. I shall see you next time.